Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Emma Cunnington and I'm a woodwind tutor who specialises in clarinet, saxophone and the flute. Today's video is going to be on how to start your flute journey. So what model of flute you might want to get and any accessories which are going to help you throughout your flute playing. So uh, enjoy this video and I hope it's helpful. So let's get on to the subject of models and what to look for. So first I'm going to tell you what you need to be looking for before I recommend you some of the models. Now when you are looking online, looking in store, if you're able to go in and place some instruments, you need to be looking out for kind of two things. One of them is an offset G. So when you start playing the flute there's, there's kind of your B, your A and your G. Your G is slightly off to the side to make it easier to kind of play as opposed to kind of in the middle of the flute in line with these ones. So it's offset. That's the first thing you to look for. The other thing you need to look for is a split E mechanism. Now this flute does not have it. So I'll show you without first. These, this is how you play a top E. There's two um, keys in the middle. Do not go down or one of them doesn't go down when you try and play a top E. Now, I'm just going to cut the video here and I'll show you what it should look like with the split E mechanism. And this is a flute with a split E mechanism. If you look, when I play these two at the same time, this one goes down as well. Now, this split E mechanism makes it easier for your top E to come out. It still kind of sounds the same, also helps with tuning, but this without the one. So it's a little bit easier to get out. Um, that, that's kind of the, the reason behind it. So that's something just to watch out for when you are testing out flutes. Now, the last thing that you may need to consider is you may be offered by a music shop to get a flute with open tone holes. So that what that means is that these pads here or these keys here will have holes in them and you might get little plugs that slot in. Now, I wouldn't recommend that for a beginner because you're not going to need that anytime soon. So do not waste your money getting that. And you also might be offered a B foot joint, which is an extra note. So your foot joint here comes off the flute, but it's a little bit longer to allow for an extra note. Now, I wouldn't recommend you getting that as well because your Bs, you're only going to be playing them in kind of advanced material. So I wouldn't bother with it for now. So that's just a few things to watch out for before we even get talking about models. OK, so models of flute. Now, I recommend certain models to my students. Your flute teacher may recommend different ones. Ask for their advice. Go flute shopping. See if you can test out a couple of flutes if, you, if you're able to. And do your research yourself, obviously. These are just the ones I'd recommend. So the first one I would recommend is your Yamaha 222 or your 212. The 212s tend not to be made anymore. So you're going to likely have that second hand. Whereas your 222s are, you can buy them new. And they're roughly, last time I checked, about 500 600 pounds depending on where you buy them now these instruments will be silver plated on most occasions um with with a nickel body if you're not allowed to nickel plate things anymore um but they make a good sound the yamahas they're going to be reliable they're durable yamahas as i've mentioned in other videos they do great clarinets and saxophones and they also do great flutes so it could be a, a model to go to go down and it's going to be something that stands the test of time if you ever need to resell it, it will hold some of its value. Woodwind instruments, unfortunately, they do lose a little bit as time goes on, but it's going to hold its value because it's a reputable brand. Now, other models also include Trevor James flutes. Now, these, this brand is somewhat controversial, I think, for some flute teachers, but I've gotten on with them pretty well. Um, one model I'd recommend is the TJ10X and also the TJ5X look like good student flutes um similar kind of price range to the yamaha not as expensive um for the tj uh, 5x and again free blowing flutes renowned brand maybe not for the flutes trevor james more for saxophones but the good the good kind of models good instruments to to have and to play when you're first starting out another brand which i would also recommend a pearl now i did try a couple of the flutes i personally didn't get on with them but they are a good kind of starter instrument. They do have a range of models at a range of prices. Um, I would just look online, see if it's got that offset G, the split E mechanism in there and look at some reviews. And if you can, buy a flute or, yeah, buy a flute and see if you can um, maybe send it back if it's not quite the right one. Websites such as Just Flutes 
do do this and that's how i got my flute i bought it tested it out did found it like it and i sent back sent it back and got another flute and that was the flute i then ended up with see if you can do that see if you get on with it in your lessons it's often about a month's worth of um of kind of you know you can send it back um within that month so think about doing that if, if you're not sure as well now you could look into jupiter flutes they're not as expensive one of their kind of student models which i've seen online seems to be kind of retailing for about 400 pounds they're more renowned for their saxophones and they're kind of sturdy clarinets potentially i'd say if you see one second hand maybe think about it it's going to be a, a smaller investment maybe not as much tone and perhaps won't um last as long as perhaps yamaha's renowned you know well tested and very reputable but it's going to do a, a good job so could you could also go for a john packer i've said this in other two videos they could they do a good range of kind of budget woodwood instruments you're not going to get your tone though it's something where you you're getting the bare minimum you're getting an instrument to play not necessarily a good sound out of it um so you could go down the john packer route or even um websites will do their own versions of flutes just be careful with those I have found that students who have bought uh, flutes from, uh, I won't name names of course, but blue, uh, bought flutes from websites that do their own versions can break up considerably quicker, aren't as easy to play and they don't have as nice a tone as if you kind of spent a little bit more on it. So if you're seeing a flute that's not got a, an official brand for kind of a hundred pounds, I would personally stay clear. I'm. They can be good to get you started, but you, you will have to upgrade at some point. It's not going to be a flute that's that's going to keep you going for particularly long, or at least I've found with my flute students. So Buffet mentioned the clarinet video. I tend to avoid them slightly with flutes. Um, I don't feel that they're quite as reputable in the flute world. However, if you find a buffet i think it's a, a vet a buffet crampton a vet i think it's called flutes with the split e mechanism um I'd, I'd try it but i wouldn't be expecting the world they, they are you know their prime primary kind of uh um thing that they do with clarinets um but if you see one try it it's not for everyone it's not for me not as keen on them but see how you get on so that us that that's some models which you could consider now, if you're buying secondhand, as I mentioned in the clarinet and saxophone videos, you need to ask for as many, 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 many pictures and videos, if possible, of the flute you're buying. So, for example, this is my old flute that I bought off a website called Preloved. I didn't ask for many um, kind of photos and videos, but um, you should be looking for things like the pads here. So those white things there, are they all on there? Do they look kind of OK in colour? There's no weird stains. You need to be looking for any dints as well so you can see mine's kind of very well played and well worn but are there any dints often you might have a dint down here if there is a void we don't want any dints because that'll be changing the pitch of the flute which isn't what we want um other things is maybe the, maybe the lip plate as well um does it look like it's it's fairly kind of soldered on there now obviously a, a photo is only going to show you so much but if it looks like there's a massive gap in between the lip plate and the flute maybe just you know hold fire for a second because if this comes off you cannot play your flute your lip plate is there for kind of your lips to sit on almost so just be careful with that so that's the sorts of things you need to be looking out for um with buying second hand which sounds like ebay gumtree pre-loved etc you could go to a second-hand woodwind seller who would be probably more than happy to uh, sell you a refurbished flute. Prices-wise, it depends entirely on the seller. Um, but see what what you can what you can get if you post in music forums online or in Facebook groups. I'm sure you will be pointed in the right direction, or even you might see some adverts for some flutes that have been recently serviced or that, that are being sold. Have a little look at them. If possible, obviously with COVID, very, the restrictions aren't as, uh, as flexible. But if you can try them out, see if you like them. That's kind of the way to go. So that is models as well as buying secondhand, what to watch out for. 
Okay, so this part of the video is going to be focused on the head joint. So this is the bit of the flute which you play into. Now, with flutes, you've got it all right. We've got it all right. We don't have to buy reeds, which is one less expense to kind of, uh, well, to, to afford. Now, this also does mean that as you progress throughout your flute playing, you are going to need to upgrade this head joint so that you sound better. So when you first start out, you'll probably be given a stock head joint, one that's going to be made with the flute. Uh, it might be silver plated. It, it may have a silver plated or a silver lip plate if you're lucky. Um, when you're first starting out, you just need something that's going to, going to get you started. So I wouldn't worry about upgrading your head joint as long as it's one that, well, if it comes to the flute, that's, that's, that's great. I've not seen a secondhand flute that's been sold without the head joint before. So you will most likely, if not all the time, you will always get um, a head joint kind of thrown in or the original one. But when you're getting to a little bit further on in your play, maybe like grade five or six, it may be worth thinking about it. Now, these head joints can be quite costly. So the material of this head joint will vastly change the sound of the instrument. So this head joint here, I think it's a, one of the old ones which was nickel plated, um, but it doesn't make the nicest of sounds. It's a bit, not quite got very much to it. Whereas if I try my head joint, which is solid silver, it's a little bit nicer. Also, the pitch in this one is uh, is quite different. But that's probably just because this this flute is kind of my spare one, um, and it's it's not particularly uh, amazing. So you could, as mentioned, invest in a head joint. The prices range entirely for head joints. You can buy them off secondhand um, websites. You can buy them new. It entirely depends on what you what you like and what sound you're looking for. Again, try them out in person. See if you can get. To a shop try them out change them around with your flute sound see what sounds nice but this isn't something that you need to worry about until very later on but it's just something to be aware of that this the material of this will vastly vastly change the sound of your flute so that is just a little bit about head joints is a bit of a almost a pre-warning for later on but also it's slightly different to your clarinet and saxophones that you don't have to um buy those reeds it's just all about this. Okay, so this section of the video is going to be on cleaning products and anything that you might need a, that's additional. So cleaning your flute, um, I, when I got my flute, got a kind of a wooden rod and a cloth, which is a bit raggedy now, uh, which I put through my flute whenever I have played it. Now, this just mops up any kind of spit and condensation that's formed down your flute. So just a quick kind of whiz through at the end of a play or a playing session is is all that's needed now i would recommend the, the wooden ones over the metal ones as i found sometimes these can scratch and can uh, dent the the inside of flutes however the the one kind of bonus with these is that you'll notice at the end of it it's got this little line i'm about to see that yeah just about see that this little line uh, it helps you and your teacher with um making sure what we call the crown this little bit at the top here is in the right position if you look through the mouthpiece hole and you see that little line in the centre, you know that everything's all doing okay up here. With the wooden ones, um, similar sort of things going on. You can see it even clearer there, actually. Um, but it just depends. Sometimes the wooden ones do not have these on. So if you're buying one because maybe you've bought a flute secondhand and you want to buy a rod... Aim for it to be a wooden one, aim for it to have that little notch on the end so you can ensure, you know, every so often that your crown, this little bit at the top, is in the right place. All I'll say is that don't adjust it yourself if it isn't in the right place. Take it to your teacher and they might be able to help you out with that. So just make sure it's got that little notch on the end um, if possible. Okay, so other cleaning accessories include kind of like your, your, your polishing cloth. So... I got one that came with the flute, which is this one, quite a nice one. It definitely will mop up any like oils from your hands or anything that's, um, you know, anything that's come up on the instrument as you've been playing. However, you may need this just to kind of wipe off any fingerprints, also just to keep your flute looking in tip-top condition, nice and well polished. 
So I'd give it a quick wipe after I play just to make sure that it's all looking nice. Um, and that's kind of what we need this for. Um, all I'll say, range of prices, range of different materials. I'd go to your local music shop, see what they've got. This one here, I think cost about, it was about four to five pounds, I believe at the time of purchase. Just something just to add in, just to keep your, your flute in tip top condition. So the, the last sorts of things which we can talk about are these. Now, these are cleaning rods. A lot of flute teachers don't like them. I used to like them, not as keen anymore because they're quite fibrous. And I find that, you know, even if you're just looking at them, all these fibres will, will be coming off in your flute as opposed to mopping up anything. So even if I just went up on it, you won't be able to see on the camera, but there's lots of little bits coming off it in the air all the way around here. You don't really want to be having one of these in your flute. So I don't actually use these anymore um, that, are, that are like this, really close fibres. Ones which are a little bit longer might be okay, but I'd just go with the, the rod and the, the cloth method. You can't go wrong with that. So that's something just to avoid. The last thing that you could do if you're really, really wanting to, which I actually don't have one at the moment, is you can get these little kind of screwdriver-like items which have hooks on. Now, when you're playing the flute, you may find that the odd spring, so if you looked inside your flute, there's like some little metal wires, really, really small ones, like you can see just there, I think. Sometimes they'll pop out and it will mean that the flute just doesn't want to work. If you have one of these, you can hook it back onto the little kind of post and it should start working. Now, again, it's not essential. If you're a beginner, I just wouldn't worry too much. But if you're perhaps thinking, you know, in case of an emergency, you could get one. Your teacher will most likely have one. Um, that's something that I need to purchase still. But they most likely will have one so that if you need a quick repair during a the lesson, they can just quickly have a go. And then if it's something they can't repair with that quick check of the springs, then obviously it would have to go in for a service. But that's just some the last little something just to just to consider. And I'll see if I can put a link to, to one of them down below, just so you know what I'm going on about. OK, so that is your, your cleaning accessories and little extras sorted. So thank you for watching my video on how to begin your flute journey, whether that's the model of your flute, the cleaning accessories or any additional little bits that you need to consider. So if you've liked this video or if you found it helpful, please give it a like and please subscribe if possible. I'd really appreciate it. If you've got any other questions that you need answering, please comment down below or find me at www.emma-music.co.uk and find me via my contact form ask a question or ask it in the messenger box at the bottom of the screen. So wish you the best with your flute playing and happy practicing. Bye.